Okay guys, Simon Hayes from Carlson Gracie London. This is my Smash Pass instructional number two. Please go back and watch number one because you'll get the background information about how I developed this over the years from white belt to black belt, um, who gave me the details, and loads of stuff which gives you uh, interesting information about the Smash Pass. What I wanna do now is show you number two, and I wanna go straight into those details. The reason why I have number two up my sleeve is because if the guy has got longer legs than you, which Billy certainly has, then he's gonna have more strength in those legs and it's gonna be more difficult to open those legs unless you put more pressure where his ankles are crossed behind your back in guard. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a slightly different movement with my legs to be able to open his guard. But what it is gonna do is, it's gonna give him the opportunity to potentially underhook me, so you need to be aware of that because if he gets the underhook, obviously there's a whole host of sweeps suddenly open to him, which is why I would always consider and perhaps try smash pass number one first before I resort to number two. Hey, if I'm fighting someone that's six foot one, six foot two, I'm only 5'10", then I'm gonna potentially go straight to number two or number three, which you're gonna see in a week's time. So right now, let's look at number two, hand in the collar break the grip, same as number one, pushing down, even more important now, to not let that arm come back underneath because he may get an, uh, the opportunity to underhook me in a moment. So four fingers inside, centre knuckle as usual lined up with his Adam's apple, knee in the bum, nothing changed so far, but this is where it changes. Instead of going nine o'clock with my knee, okay, I'm gonna come up here. So let's start that again. Four fingers inside, break the grip. Four fingers inside his collar. Middle knuckle lined up with his Adam's apple. Knee in the bum, step straight up. Now, there is more pressure on Billy's guard than when I've simply got my knee on the floor at nine o'clock. However, it does give Billy the ability, if he's very fast, to get an underhook there. So I want you to be aware of that. And be careful to hold this arm for as long as possible. And when you let it go, be as quick as possible. So right now, if I reach behind me, with this posture as it is, when we bent over at 45 degrees, he's gonna triangle me, watch. That's what will happen, guys, and we don't want that. It's the main problem with the smash pass is people trying to do it with poor posture, you're gonna get triangled. So understand that your back has to be upright. It needs to be vertical like a board. A good way of thinking about how your posture is, is if you roll your eyes without tilting your head, you roll your eyes, can you see the ceiling above you? If you can see the ceiling above you, you've got good posture. If you're leant forward, even 10 degrees, you go to look up, suddenly I can't see the ceiling. So you're here, you roll your eyes up. That's good posture, guys. Four fingers inside. One, two, three, pushing down. My four fingers inside, middle knuckle lined up with his Adam's apple. Knee in the bum, come up. Now, this time, instead of trying to break open the guard leaning forward, I'm gonna pull Billy to me and I'm gonna have good posture. And let's see how his triangle is. Triangle. No triangle. Watch again. Same thing, good posture. Let's see if he's got a triangle. No triangle. Even leaning forward 10% puts you at risk of triangle, guys. You've got to be really careful about that if you're going to use this technique. Four fingers inside. One, two, three. Pushing down with my knuckles now. Four fingers inside his collar. Middle knuckle lined up with his Adam's apple. Now, when I go up with my hand and down using explosivity to break open his guard, because strength won't work. Remember, this guy's got long, strong legs. So you need to use explosivity and speed. The quicker you can be, the less opportunity he's got when I let go of this arm, the less opportunity he's got to throw that arm and get the underhook, which gives him loads of pendulum sweeps, flower sweeps, you know, loads of bad stuff for me. So I'm gonna be fast. Firstly, because I'm more likely to explosively open his guard if I'm fast. Secondly, it gives him less time and opportunity to underhook me. Now, walking the four fingers up into his collar. My other hand goes to the base of his spine and holds his trousers to make sure that he can't roll over his shoulder to escape 
and he can't give me side control until I want to take side control. Look at my knees, they're completely and utterly off the ground. If I'm here, Billy, how's that? It's fine. If I come here, how's that? It's horrible. Yep, yeah, exactly. If I put one knee on the ground, how's that? It's fine. If I take that knee off the ground and I've got both knees off the ground, how is it? Yeah, it's horrible again. Yeah, he wants me to have side control. I'm not gonna give him side control until I've walked all the way around, all the way around. And by this time, Billy just wants to be in, underneath side control. Very rare for someone to want that. But now, Billy's feeling the pressure is off him and I got my three points. Let's just have a look here at that opportunity that Billy has for a triangle. So, grip break. Four fingers inside. Middle knuckle lined up with the Adam's apple. Knee in the bum. Stepping up. Look at the way I'm leant forward slightly here, guys. If you start coming round from here, even though you're higher up, you start coming round the back to open his guard, okay? Even if you try and do it fast, if you're leant forward, you're gonna get triangled. Watch this. That's what will happen. So how am I gonna get my posture? Because I'm holding Billy's collar here. So how am I gonna get my posture? Well, Billy's gonna come to me. Watch, if I wanna stand up straight, if I wanna sit up straight, watch the back of Billy's head now. He's come to me. I'm not gonna leave him here and get triangled. I'm gonna be here. Billy, try and triangle me. Very, very hard for him to get anything meaningful triangle-wise. So from here, hand in the collar. One, two, three. Four fingers inside. Knee in the bum, step up. Up, down, left cross. Walking round now, walking my fingers up into his collar. Hand into his butt. Walking around. Walking around, walking around. Can you see how my knees are off the floor, guys? Every single bit of pressure is going into Billy and I'm making him eat his knee. From here now, I've come all the way to 90 degrees and I'm gonna look over my shoulder and he's gonna be very happy that I've got side control. Oh, that's nice, Bill, isn't it? That's what you want, guys. You want your opponent to be happy to give you side control. He doesn't wanna be stacked like that. If your knees are on the floor, you're not gonna be putting the pressure on him. You're not gonna be making him eat his knee. Where I want your weight, guys, is going into his hamstring. Your chest is pressing into his hamstring and you're making him eat his own knee. So, hand in the collar. Four fingers inside. Middle knuckle lined up with his Adam's apple. Knee in the bum. Step up. Fast, good posture. Up, down, left hook. Back, bolt upright, good posture. Walk the hands up to the back, walking round, walking round, walking round, walking round. He wants me to have side control now. Look over my shoulder and I've got side control and he's happy and I've got three points. Whoosh. Okay, let's look at the choke version. So from here, guys, just like instructional number one, we have the ability to choke. The two main points when you're going for the choke before the guard pass is firstly, stay straight on. Don't start walking around to the side because the further you walk around to the side, the more opportunity it gives your opponent to actually get their leg around your head and to actually give you side control to avoid the choke, okay? Really good guys will potentially, while you're trying to choke them, try and roll over their shoulder as well. So remember that hand on the back of the trousers, it's there for two things. If the guy tries to roll over his shoulder, which high level guys will try and do, it's there to pull him back down so he can't roll over his shoulder. If the guy is trying to give you side control, which is what lower level guys will try and do, then that hand is gonna pull his bum up off the mat. So that hand, you've got to be ready. Is it gonna pull him down or is it gonna pull him up? I don't know. We have to wait and see what he's gonna do to try and avoid the choke. The second point is about the choke. When I first get that grip on the lapel with my left hand, after I've come up, down, done a left hook, and I've grabbed the lapel, I then need to walk up his lapel as far as possible, like a little spider walking up some curtains. Only when I've got 
my hand all the way, as deep as it can be, will I get that paper cutter choke. So if you try and do it lazily, if you start walking around to the side and your hand isn't deep enough, you're just gonna get side control. Not too bad, but you could end the fight there and there with a choke. Four fingers inside, knee in the bum, step up, up, down, left hook, good posture. And then staying straight on, walking that hand up his lapel, deep into his collar, other hand, round behind his trousers. Now remember now, a really good guy is gonna roll over his neck. So if I don't prepare to, to, uh, to pull his bum back down, he'll roll over this shoulder here. Watch, that's what Billy's gonna do now. And he's out, replace the guard. Yeah, take the back, whatever it is he's gonna do. So that hand on the butt, make sure that he can't roll over the shoulder because you're gonna pull him back down if he tries to. The other escape that Billy may try and do is instead of roll over the shoulder, which is what a high level guy is gonna do because he'll turtle and he won't give the guard pass, a lower level guy is just gonna give you the guard pass and don't care about the three points which they just conceded. So that hand, instead of pulling him back down, is gonna pull him up. So we're here, four fingers inside, knee in the bum, step up. A lower level guy, when I try and do the choke, if I walk around to the side, he's gonna move that over my, in front of my face and he's gonna give me side control. So what this hand is gonna do on the back of his pants, watch this. What this hand is gonna do on the back of the pants now, when he goes to give, when he goes to, to, to give me side control, try and take side control, I'm gonna pull his bum up in the air. So that hand on the back of the trousers is super important, guys. It's gonna stop the really good jiu-jitsu fighters rolling over their shoulder, and it's gonna stop the slightly lower level guys giving you side control to give you the ability to perhaps finish the fight there and then with a the choke. So let's look at the choke now. So, right hand in, smash pass instructional number two. One, two, three. Four fingers inside. Step up, up, down, in, walking round. Walking my fingers up his collar, other hand to behind his trousers. Now, I don't want to walk around to the side. I want to stay flat onto him because then this leg here is going to stay on this side of my head. The more I walk around to the side, the more ability he's got to escape and give me side control. So I'm going to stay here and I'm going to put my elbow down towards the floor and pull his butt up in the air. Four fingers inside. One, two, three. Four fingers inside his lapel. Middle knuckle lined up with his Adam's apple. That gives you the correct opening. When you open the gi there, that's exactly the right bit of space for your hand to go in when you've thrown your left hook. So we're here, or a right hook if you're doing it on the other side. So we're here, knee in the bum, step up. As I reach back, watch my back, watch the posture. Suddenly, my back is vertical. Now I stay straight on and I walk my hands up his collar until they're as deep as possible. And now I come round with my right hand and I grab his trousers at the base of his spine, right in the middle. And the mistake now would be walking around to the side. I'm not gonna walk to the side. I'm just gonna stay here so that he cannot put his leg down because my head is blocking his right leg from giving me side control. If I walk too far around to the side, he's gonna give me side control to avoid the choke. I wanna stay right where I am, put my left elbow on the floor, pull his bum up in the air and tap him. Hand in the collar. Four fingers inside, knee in the bum, step up. Remember now, I'm gonna bring him to me so that I can get good posture and my back is, is bolt upright. I'm gonna come up and down with explosivity with my arm and then a left hook very, very fast. Posture up, down, left hook. Four fingers inside his collar, walking up. Other hand to control him, to stop him rolling over his shoulder or to stop him giving me side control. I can pull him up or down with this hand here. 
Right now, I'm not gonna go to pass his guard, I'm gonna stay flat on, I'm gonna pull his bum in the air and I'm gonna put my left elbow on the mat in a paper cutter choke to tap him. Guys, thanks for watching. That was smash pass number two. That was the smash pass that we do if the guy's got slightly longer legs. But remember, smash pass number one is a better option if possible because you don't put one foot up, so you don't give your opponent the opportunity to underhook that leg and get a pendulum sweep or an arm lock off the underhook. So remember that every smash pass that you do, you should consider number one first because that is the safest one where no sweeps are available. From number two onwards, you're taking more risks, but sometimes if the guy's much taller than you, and I fight middle heavy and I'm quite short, so I'm gonna be fighting guys that are perhaps six foot two, I'm gonna to start to need to take some risks to open that guard. If all I do is put the knee in the bum and the other knee to nine o'clock, I'm only gonna be able to open someone's legs that's the same height as me. Every inch they are taller, the more I have to start considering taking more risks to open those legs. So, if you wanna figure out how to open the guard of someone that's really tall, like a lot taller than you, you need to watch next week, Smash Pass number three. Oos.